Hello everyone, welcome to Dentamedia YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss about pulp vitality tests. Let's get started. Introduction the accurate diagnosis of the true histological status of the pulp is of significant importance for treatment planning. There are three terminology to understand, pulp sensibility testing, assess the neural sensitivity of the pulp. Pulp vitality testing, assess the vascularity of the pulp, pulp sensitivity, condition of the pulp being very responsive to a stimulus. Neural sensibility tests, these are the tests that indirectly tell us about the vitality status of the pulp. They work on the principle of stimulating the neural fibers present in the pulp. These are thermal tests, which includes heat test, cold test, electric pulp test, EPT, anesthetic test, test cavity, thermal test. These tests involve the application of cold and heat to a tooth to determine its sensitivity to thermal changes. Heat test materials used, electrical heat carrier, hot gutta percha stick, more than 65.5 degrees Celsius, others, hot water. Under rubber dam isolation, hot burnisher, hot compound, dry rubber polishing wheel, the area to be tested is isolated and dried and a suitable lubricant, Vaseline, is applied and heat is directed to the exposed surface of the tooth. And the patient's response is noted, Heat carrier instrument that can deliver a controlled temperature to the tooth is preferable. Gutta percha sticks can be heated over a Bunsen burner flame until they are almost molten, at which stage they can be applied to the tooth surface. The heat is applied to the occlusibuccal third of the exposed crown. If there is no response, the hot substance can be moved to the central portion of the crown or closer to the tooth cervical margin. When a response occurs, heat should be removed immediately. If a heated ball burnisher is used, it needs to be heated over a Bunsen burner flame until the metal is glowing red hot. The instrument is then held about 1, 2 mm away from the labial or buccal surface of the tooth so the heat can radiate from the instrument to the tooth. It is important to avoid touching the tooth surface as the hot instrument will burn the enamel and leave a black spot, mechanism of action. Heat application for less than 5 seconds, results in vasodilation, which increases intrapulpal pressure, results in reduced neural excitation threshold, immediate pain or pain persist after removal of stimuls result of irreversible pulpitis, positive response similar to contralateral tooth is healthy pulp, no response is non-vital pulp, cold test. Endo-ice, mixture of gases, co 2 snow, dry ice, pencil of ice, ice cold water under rubber dam isolation, ethyl chloride, dichlorodifluoromethane, dry ice sticks were the most reliable cold test to use in most diagnostic situations. It is also the cheapest and quickest method of testing the pulp's reaction to a cold stimulus. The dry ice is formed in a device known as the odontotist. The temperature of the dry ice is approximately 78 degrees C it is able to penetrate full coverage restorations. Tetrafluoroethane has a temperature of about 26 degrees C when first sprayed from the pressurized kin but this reduces to about 18.5 degrees C in the mouth. Mixture of gases temperature is approximately 50 degrees C and reduces to about 28 degrees C in the mouth, they are generally less effective than dry ice, especially when testing teeth with porcelain crowns. Cold application for less than 15 seconds. Positive response similar to that of contralateral control tooth, is healthy pulp, short sharp pain that disappears rapidly once the stimulus is removed is dot reversible pulpitis, an excruciating painful response that lingers on even after the stimulus is removed is irreversible, no response, non-vital. Electric pulp test. The objective is to stimulate a pulpal response by subjecting the tooth to an increasing degree of electric current. The electrode is placed against the incisal third enamel surface of the isolated and dried tooth crown using toothpaste as an electrolyte. 
The electrode is placed against the mid-third of the mesiobuccal cusp of molars and buccal cusp of premolars. Normal response, a positive response is a response that occurs at the same neural excitation threshold as the control tooth. Negative response, this denotes a non-vital tooth, which fails to respond even when the tester is set to the highest electrical excitation value. Early response, this denotes a diseased state of pulp as the tooth responds to a threshold which is less than that of the control tooth. Delayed response, this also denotes a diseased state of the pulp wherein the tooth responds at a significantly higher electrical excitation level than compared to the control tooth, false positive response, partial pulp necrosis, high anxiety, ineffective tooth isolation, contact with metal restoration, false negative response calcified canals, recently traumatized tooth, immature apex, drugs that increase pain threshold, poor contact of pulp tester, key points. The diagnostic accuracy of cold test is 86%, the electric pulp test is 81%, and heat test is 71%. Hence, clinically, a combination of cold test followed by EPT is recommended, Cold test is the most effective sensitivity test for immature permanent teeth, anesthetic test, the objective is to anesthetize one tooth at a time until the pain disappears and is localized to a specific tooth, using either infiltration or the intraligament injection, inject the most posterior tooth in the area suspected of being the cause of pain. If pain persists when the tooth has been fully anesthetized, Anesthetize the next tooth mesial to it and continue to do so until the pain disappears. The anesthetic test is obviously a last resort test and has an advantage over the test cavity, during which iatrogenic damage is possible. Test cavity. It is performed when other methods of diagnosis have failed. The test cavity is made by drilling through the enamel, dentin junction of an unanesthetized tooth. The drilling should be done at high speed and with a water coolant. Sensitivity or pain felt by the patient is an indication of pulp vitality. Pulp vascularity tests, true vitality status can be ascertained only when we are able to assess the vascular or blood supply to the tooth, laser Doppler flowmetry. Laser Doppler flowmetry is a non-invasive method of assessing and accurately measuring the rate of blood flow in a tissue. Laser Doppler flowmetry was developed by Tenland in 1982 and later by Holloway in 1983. Uses a laser source that is aimed at the pulp, and the laser light travels to the pulp using the dentinal tubules as guides. This principle is used to ascertain the presence of blood movement within the pulp space. The laser light is transmitted through a fiber optic source and placed onto the tooth surface. The light enters the tooth and gets absorbed by the red blood cells which lead to a shift in the frequency of the scattered light. This occurs due to the Doppler principle. This shift in frequency does not occur in light that is absorbed by stationary objects. The proportion of Doppler shifted light is detected with the help of a photodetector. It is potentially used to differentiate a healthy, traumatized tooth with reduced blood supply from a non-vital tooth. Pulse oximetry Pulse oximetry is a non-invasive method to measure the oxygen saturation levels during the administration of anesthesia or other medications with the help of a finger, ear, or foot probes. Principle, the pulse oximeter sensor consists of two light-emitting diodes, one to transmit red light, 660 nm, and the other to transmit infrared light, 940 nm, and a photodetector on the opposite side of the vascular bed. The light-emitting diode transmits red and infrared light through a vascular bed such as the finger or ear, oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin absorb different amounts of red and infrared light. The pulsatal change in the blood volume causes periodic changes in the amount of red and infrared light absorbed by the vascular bed before reaching the photodetector. The relationship between the pulsatal change in the absorption of red light and the pulsatal change in the absorption of infrared light is analyzed by the pulse oximeter to determine the saturation of arterial blood. Dual Wavelength Spectrophotometry Dual Wavelength Spectrophotometry is a method independent of a pulsatal circulation. 
The presence of arterioles rather than arteries in the pulp and its rigid encapsulation by surrounding dentine and enamel make it difficult to detect a pulse in the pulp space. This method measures oxygenation changes in the capillary bed rather than the supply vessels and hence does not depend on a pulsatile blood flow, differentiates with reproducible readings between a pulp chamber of a vital and non-vital tooth, uses visible light that is filtered and guided to the tooth by fiber optics. Thus unlike laser light, added eye protection is unnecessary for the patient and the operator. Non-invasive and yields objective results. Measurement of surface temperature of tooth This method is based on the assumption that if pulp becomes non-vital, the tooth no longer has internal blood supply, thus should exhibit a lower surface temperature than that of its vital counterparts. Fanabund in 1985 showed that it is possible to differentiate by means of crown surface temperature, distinct difference between vital and non-vital teeth, transillumination with fiber optic light It is a system of illumination whereby light is passed through a finely drawn glass or plastic fibers by a process known as total internal reflection. By this method, a pulpless tooth that is not noticeably discolored may show a gross difference in translucency when a shadow produced on a mirror is compared to that of adjacent vital teeth. Plethysmography It is a method for assessing the changes in volume and has been applied to the investigation of arterial disease because the volume of the limb or organ exhibits transient changes over the cardiac cycle. The same principle can be used to assess tooth vitality. Presence or absence of a waveform can indicate the status of the tooth. Radiation probe using xenon radioisotope The tooth to be tested injected with xenon in saline. A lead shield placed over the tooth and radiation counts taken every 10 seconds for 15 minutes, using a small cadmium telluride radiation probe. Radiation counts detected from both vital and pulpless teeth Pulpless teeth report relatively constant counts for the duration of the experiment, 200 to 300. In vital teeth the initial counts were much higher, 718 to 981. So in this video, we have covered pulp vitality tests with recent advances. Please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get latest updates. Thank you for watching.